Senator Lee. I'm going to be uh, showing a video clip in just a second, but at the outset of this, I want to make clear, I think nearly every American could agree that parents have some legitimate interest in what their child reads or is taught or otherwise exposed to about sex. I, I think it's very, very difficult for anyone to disagree with that. Now, that being the case, I think we need to proceed with this conversation with that backdrop and that understanding. I'm going to play a video clip right now. The video clip is from Deborah Caldwell Stone. She's the legal counsel for the American Library Association. Here's what she has to say on some of these topics, these topics that deal not with book banning, because no one here has banned any book. You can still get these books anywhere you want them. The question isn't whether to ban them. The question is whether they should be included in curriculum or in a school library. A library or a school curriculum, by definition, will be finite. There are a finite number of books that you can put in there. The question is which books should be included and which should not. Let's hear what Ms. Deborah Caldwell-Stone has to say on this topic. But ultimately, we found that the thing that needs to happen most, and it needs to happen before these bills are introduced, is sustained messaging uh, that reframes this issue, um, that, uh, that takes it away from the idea that these are inappropriate for minors or sexually inappropriate for minors and promote them as diverse materials and programming that are about inclusion, fairness, and the protection of everybody's right to see themselves and their families reflected in the books in the public library. Okay, so I think what we saw here right now was someone saying the quiet part out loud, acknowledging what the goal is. There is a goal here, and the goal is to sexualize children, to provide minors with sexually explicit material and then hide this content from the parents. Hide it by changing the messaging, avoiding the heat by saying, no, no, these are not the droids you're looking for. This is not about sexually explicit content. This is about equality. This is about justice. This is about what's right and wrong. It has nothing to do with sex. Well, of course that's what someone would do if they were grooming your child, if someone were trying to sexualize your child. And make no mistake, that is what's happening. You see, there has been something that has happened in the last few years. During COVID, a lot of kids had online school and parents were able to observe in the classroom in ways that they haven't been in the past. Observe what was being taught, how it was being taught. And it's awakened something significant among parents throughout America. And that's why you've got groups that are standing up, groups of parents. Uh, it, it places uh, are across the country, including Utah, like Utah Parents United, the American Accountability Foundation, and Ms. Neely's group, Parents Defending Education. They're providing parents with the tools they need and the information that they desire about how best to protect their kids from inappropriate things that they may be being taught or may be being given at the school where they spend most of the best hours of most days of the week throughout the school year every year. Now, uh, one of the explicit excerpts uh, read by Mr. Eden just a few minutes ago and presented to this committee uh, is from All Boys Aren't Blue, a book available without restriction in at least one Utah junior high school attended by children ages 13 to 15 and at least five Utah high schools. In three Utah high schools, the book was available to children over 16. Now, remember from what was shared with us from Mr. Eden, this book has some really graphic, sexually explicit stuff. This is pornographic. This is obscene. It's certainly not appropriate for children, and it is no matter what else you think about it. It is something that is sexual in nature. And I, I, I really do think very few, if any, American could reasonably disagree with the statement that parents have an interest in what their children are taught when it comes to sex. And so the moment parents take reasonable steps to protect their children, and lawmakers honor those efforts to protect their children from exposure, then all of a sudden we've got a problem. And then the left and Vice President Harris cry book ban, even though all of these books are still available. You can still buy them, all of them. On Amazon, you can still buy them, all of them, all over the place. 
You can't, by the way, buy Ryan T. Anderson's book, When Harry Became Sally, on Amazon. That's been taken down from Amazon. But the point is this. This is not a ban. This is about schools deciding what's appropriate for school children. And sexually explicit, obscene, pornographic material isn't appropriate. And many parents are legitimately concerned about that. So I, I, I'm concerned about this in a variety of respects. And I'd, I'd just like to ask the question, Mr. Eden, is placing common sense age restrictions on pornographic content or removing sexually explicit books from school curricul curriculum and school libraries, is that book banning? And does that carry any ramifications for what we would talk about uh, in terms of the First Amendment, uh, uh, the, in terms of book banning in the First Amendment sense? No, sir. No. It does not. And why is that? What, why is that not book banning? Why does not, that not offend the First Amendment in any way, shape, or form? It's a question of community curation, and no student is actually blocked from acquiring the book in a broader sense. So if you're providing content to a child, that if spoken to a child by you, by the school, if that would constitute, in some jurisdictions, in some circumstances, a crime or a tort, you've got a problem. These school districts are acting in response to legitimate parental concerns. They should be removing these. Shame on them if they don't, and shame on those who want to groom children sexually. Thank you. Senator Booker. 